welcome to Pennington Place. It's great to have you. I just wanted to walk out here and show you guys the garden. We have not gotten any rain in this area, so I'm surprised we have anything growing at this point. Um, the only thing that we've had growing is weeds, 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 weeds. And there's lots of weeds that can do without rain. Unfortunately, the garden needs rain. So, um, we've gone through and we've, we've weeded. We're, we had to wait for things to grow and get a little bigger so we could see what we had and what we didn't have. So, um, we're in the process of getting it all weeded and taken care of. These are our beans. And what we do, we don't just plant like a row of beans, a row of something. We do, I don't, I forget what you call it, um, but we like to do like beans and we mix in squash, some kind of a zucchini or something. Um, or we do our, over there, we have sunflowers with corn. Uh, because the bigger plants offer shade. And, uh, you know, so we like to co-plant. I don't know what you call it. But here we've got different squash coming up. We just had a variety pack of seeds for summer squash. So there's the little yellows. There's um, zucchini. There's different kinds in there. Three or four different kinds. So we just planted beans, which these are, um, we put the, the posts in and, and the wire and stuff because these are the um, Trail of Tears. They're black beans. They will vine up. So those beans, we will um, let them dry and then we'll harvest them and, and use them for soups and stuff like that. So over here, you can see that. My chickens like a whole lot. They like the green cabbage. See? My green cabbage. Chickens love it. But look at this over here. Purple cabbage. Haven't touched. And cabbage does really well with dry weather. So we're going to have a lot of purple cabbage. Okay, right here is more squash. Like I said, we have a variety pack. And so we're going to have zucchini. We're going to have yellows. We're going to have all kinds of different squash. Which we love squash. I like to take squash and I like to grill it. Uh, over charcoal. Um, we just like squash a lot. It's one of those nice, easy things to grow and taste good. Okay, here we've got sweet potatoes. We've got a whole row of sweet potatoes. And then right here I've got two eggplants. Which I've got some eggplants coming on. Eggplant obviously does halfway decent. See there's one coming on. And then you can see one over on that plant coming in. Eggplant obviously does well with no rain too. Surprise! And here we've got our sunflowers and our corn. We have different variety of corn. We've got sweet corn and we have popping corn. Um, so it's all kind of, this is a sweet corn here. Then on the other side we'll have the popcorn. So some didn't come in. We have spaces open, but yeah, that's life when you have no rain. Last year we had so much rain that uh, we had root rot everywhere, which was very depressing. So, uh, moving on down, see all weeds, all weeds, all weeds, all weeds. Here's a row that got big enough, we could see what it was. It's corn, and these are purple dragon's tongue beans. And then this row, we haven't weeded out, we've got the big weeds down, but now we got to go in and actually weed out from the plants. Um, navy beans, and then corn. And I think over here we have pinto beans and corn and some squash. We got a few squash here and there. I think these are our um, spaghetti squashes. So, yeah, we're just in the process now. See how dry everything is? It's crazy. It's crazy how dry this dirt is. It, it's just wow. I'm shocked anything has grown, honestly. And there's a wheelbarrow full of our weeds, and there's another row that we, we dug out. So actually, we've got two more rows to dig out. And then over, there's a row right there that we need to get 
dug out. And here's a row that we need to get dug out. Everything's big enough that we can see it now. This one dug out nicely. Here we had a row, but we didn't see anything come up. And I believe here we had like colorabi, things like that. So still, we're not seeing anything. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure. We're just going to have to get in here on our hands and knees and dig. Because as we were chopping all this down to get ready, we did find one colorabi plant. And for the life of me, I don't know where it is now. But it was in here, which gives me hope that maybe maybe we've got some because I had quite a bit. And I like the colorabi. I like to eat it, just pull it out of the ground, clean it, cut it, eat it. It's good stuff. And then of course we had two open rows, so these had nothing in it. And you know, Michael wanted to go through until that was the plan. We kept enough space that we could go through until, but uh, with it so dry, if we till, we're just gonna dry it out more. So we don't wanna do that. And we do not use any type of chemicals on the garden. Uh, the only chemical I've ever used on the garden would be Epsom salt. And they say that's really good to put around the roots of your vegetables, just a tiny bit of then water. And it gives them a little extra mineral so they grow better, produce better. But that's all we do. We don't use any pesticides. Um, we actually see the thing hanging on the fence, the yellow top in the bottom. There's one on the ground right there. I didn't get it back up. Uh, those are for June bugs. It has a little, little thing on the top that has some kind of scented attractant form. The June bugs are attracted to it. That green thing, the June bugs are attracted to it through smell of some kind of a hormone or something I don't know and they fall in and then when they fall in they're caught in this in this thing and then uh, once those get pretty full my chickens get to eat them so let me take you back over here and I'll show you the grapes this is the second year for the grapes and we're not gonna get many but my grapes have survived my grapes have survived. We just used an old swing frame and we put wire up around it for it to climb and then hoping it would have got on the back fence and it did. But here I got grapes. I got the little grapes. We got little grapes here and there. I won't have enough to do bear, you know, any kind of like grape jam or anything. But I told Emma this year we're going to eat our grapes. And then we added three more grape vines. Ah, the weeds are crazy. Then over here we have our, uh, it's a type of peas. It's a type of peas. They're growing, but we're not, they're not growing fast. And I know it's because we need rain. And it may be too late for our garden. I don't know. Okay, so here's our small garden at the side of the house. This is all potatoes. We got them planted. Good Friday, like we're supposed to. We did three different kinds, Kennebec, uh, Yukon Golds, uh, maybe it's just those two. I don't think we did the third one this year. They were big, they were beautiful, um, but no rain. Look at this, they're browning. One of the plants died, Michael dug it, there was nothing there. So we're just going to keep them there and hope we get some rain and see if we grow anything because at this point that's a lot of work for nothing. So I'm going to see if any of them will produce. Last year we had lots of potatoes. Our potatoes did well with all the floodings we had last year. We lost most of our garden, so I wasn't able to can. And we've pretty much gone through all the tomato juice and potatoes and everything that I canned two years ago. Pretty much gone because last year I couldn't replenish my supply. So we're just going to let them grow out and see. Hope for rain and see if we can get it soon enough to save them. These are my tomatoes. I have purple Cherokee. And I've got the white tomatoes, heirlooms. And then we have Amish paste. So I've had a few red tomatoes, the Amish paste. Um, the weeds are starting to come up. i got to get in there and weed this garden out good. But they have survived. Without all the rain, they've survived. But what we've done is we've taken, uh, can you see that two liter bottle right here? 
Okay, what we do is we take a two liter bottle, we cut the bottom off. We turn it upside down, we keep the lid on, and we drill a hole on each side of the lid. Like pierce it from one side to the other. Then we drill a hole right in the middle of the top of the lid. We bury it in the ground. We put uh, rabbit manure in there. And then we go through, and there's, I don't know if you can see in between the plants, but we have them like every second or third tomato plant, we have one of these. And what we do is fill it with water. The water mixes with the rabbit manure. And you know how people talk about a fer fertilizing tea. That's kind of what we get. The chickens have dug one of the bottles up. They can let me show you. This is one of the bottles. So see the, drill the hole straight through both sides. And then Michael didn't do a hole on the bottom of that one. You're supposed to do a hole right in the in the red lid too. So when you put it in the ground, water goes out both sides and and down, so that it'll it'll go sideways in your row. I have to replant that one. Sometimes the chickens dig them up. So tomatoes aren't doing too bad. They're not growing quick or large, but I'm getting tomatoes. Um, it's late. I should be getting more, but no rain. I am thankful that they're, they've even survived and that I'm even getting tomatoes at this point. But that's okay. We'll take what we can get. We'll take what the good Lord sees fit to give us. Cucumbers. I got a cucumber on the vine there. As my neighbor calls them, pickle plants. He's an old timer and they're pickle plants. And I love it when he talks about his pickle plants because he always does well with cucumbers. We never do. I think it's our soil. So we just have to figure out what part of our property they like so that we can grow them better. So, so far, the garden's hanging in there. Like I said, this is our little garden. I showed you earlier the big garden. Um, hopefully I get enough to can this year. But if I don't, then I guess I'll just be happy with enough to eat through the summer. So, any suggestions, any... Um, organic ways that we can correct some of this. I mean, hand watering is not the same as Mother Nature giving you a good rain. It is not the same. I don't care how much you water. We've sprinkled the garden off and on just to keep the tomatoes going. Um, but it's not the same. It's not the same as, as the rain coming down and doing it for you. Anyway, any suggestions, comments? I'd sure appreciate it at this point because I'm a little frustrated. I'm a little heartbroken, but... At least we're going to get something, so I can't say it's a complete loss. Have a beautiful day. We'll talk to you later. God bless.